Hey guys, Trip here, and today we're going to be talking about Fallout 4. Fallout 4, as you probably know, is an upcoming first-person role-playing game from the makers of Skyrim and Fallout 3. Now, I know this game isn't out yet, but I wanted to talk about a potential issue I feel needs to be addressed. The issue of player agency. Agency is the level of control that a player feels they have in a game world. It's that feeling you get when you're allowed to express yourself through a video game. Making your own character, giving him a personality, and watching his actions shape the world around him are all components of player agency. Bethesda games have always made player agency their top priority. Their games are marketed as worlds where you can be anyone and do anything. This is an enormous dynamic world where you can create any kind of character you want, go where you want, and do whatever you want. Player freedom remains our absolute number one goal. For many people, it's the main reason they play these games in the first place. Fallout 4 is taking the series in a new direction. The game is placing additional emphasis on narrative and characterization, giving the player his own voice and a heavily predetermined backstory. While this may stifle the ability to create your own unique character, the hope here is to create an enticing, emotionally investing story that will hook players in. But is this the goal Bethesda should be pursuing? As I always say, sequels should improve upon existing systems. If one of Fallout's goals is to create a world that values player freedom and expression above all else, can Fallout 4 live up to this mantra with a pre-made character? In this episode, we're going to talk about the balancing act between player agency and narrative in the Fallout series and video games as a whole. Will Fallout 4 benefit from a predefined character? Does player expression need to be sacrificed in order to deliver a better story? Can we have it both ways? Well, let's take a look. As someone who's been exposed to numerous leaks and early gameplay footage, I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler-free as possible. However, I will be getting into some very basic stuff about the main character's background, so if you consider that a spoiler, heads up. So first things first, I know previous Fallout games have had preset characters as well. In the first game, you're a vault dweller chosen by the Overseer to venture into the wasteland and replace your vault's water supply. In the second game, you're a descendant of that character and the chosen one of a tribe he created. The third game goes a step further making your character the young, vault-raised child of a scientist. You could say each of these backstories were restrictive in their own way, but each of them were vague enough to create almost any personality or lifestyle you wanted. Even though Fallout 3 forced you to be a 19-year-old and the son of a scientist, the tutorial allowed you to determine what type of person you were, what your character's interests were, what sort of occupation you wanted to have, whether or not you were a violent sociopath. Nothing about your preset backstory determined anything significant about what type of person you had to be. Contrast this with Fallout 4. We know we're a war veteran. We know we have a spouse and a son. We know we care about our spouse and son. We know we're responsible enough and financially stable enough to have a middle class suburban home. This already says more about me than I would like. Within the opening scene of the game, core aspects of my personality and lifestyle have already been chosen for me. Sure, the idea of a family man looking for his loved ones in a brave new world is an interesting idea, for the first few playthroughs. Fallout 4's character doesn't seem to leave room for many other personality types, and I feel like the one we're given will grow stale in subsequent playthroughs. In 3, I could make it clear through dialogue that I didn't care about my father or his quest. To be fair, that mindset would lock me out of the main quest line, but at least it was an option. I didn't have any responsibilities forced upon me. I didn't have a job picked for me. I wasn't forced to be married and have a family of my own. I was, more or less, left to my own devices the moment I left the vault. This allowed me to create a character that's different each time I played the game. In one playthrough, I was the star athlete of Vault 101's baseball team. My character used a baseball bat to bring justice to the wasteland. In another playthrough, I was a mad scientist, an anarchic troublemaker who, according to my aptitude test, was obsessed with explosives and science. In Fallout 4, no matter what, I will be a middle-class US soldier with a wife and child whom I apparently love. Sure, I can randomly decide to go insane once I leave the vault, but I can do nothing to change the core aspects of who my character is. Not only that, but from what I've seen, the dialogue is very bland. 
Good morning. Vault Tech calling. Vault Tech? Remind me again? Why, we're about you, sir, and helping secure your future. You see, Vault Tech is the foremost builder of state of the art underground fallout shelters. Vaults, if you will. But there's room for my entire family, right? Of course, of course. Minus your robot, naturally. In fact, you're already cleared for entrance. You never really get a chance to flesh out your character's personality. At best, you can be sarcastic or hostile at times, but it all seems very disjointed and schizophrenic. The issue is made worse with the inclusion of voice acting, so you can't pretend your character is delivering his lines in a way that would make sense for the personality you chose for him. So I could randomly decide to go insane once I leave the vault, but whenever I decide to talk to someone, my character will remain calm and even-toned outside of specific situations. So what does this all mean for player agency? Well, for one, if I don't feel like I'm expressing myself through a character, I become much less attached to his actions. I love The Witcher 3, but in that game, I'm playing as Geralt. No matter what choices I make, I'm making them through Geralt. As a result, each decision I make has less weight. It's not me making the choice, it's Geralt. Now, to be fair, The Witcher made up for this with brilliant narrative design and captivating characters that made me care about Geralt's choices. Will Fallout 4 deliver a similar experience? I guess we'll find out. But do games have to sacrifice player agency in order to deliver a better story? I can certainly see the argument for that. If you're trying to create an emotionally investing storyline, it may be easiest to give the writers as much control as possible. The writers can't predict every single character players are going to make, so it may be most efficient to limit player agency in order to create a streamlined story. I think there are ways to maintain player agency while still providing a good narrative, but I can see how others would argue against that. But I think we need to broaden our interpretation of what makes a good story. Keep in mind, these are video games, not movies, not books. We don't need to bind ourselves to their rules. A video game can have a good story without it being directly dictated by the developer. This is where emergent gameplay and storytelling comes in. Drop the player in a well-crafted, intriguing world. Set up factions and cultures and a civilization for the player to interact with. Create a looming conflict that casts a shadow over the world, and allow the player to interact with that conflict as he sees fit, siding with whom he wants and solving problems how he wants. When people talk about Bethesda games, they talk about the unique situations they find themselves in. They talk about the bizarre treasure they found in ancient ruins. They talk about being chased through the streets by minotaurs. They talk about guards scolding them for being convicted criminals. They talk about being ambushed by hitmen and bounty hunters. They talk about all the wacky, crazy adventures they managed to stumble into. This is emergent storytelling, and it's what makes Bethesda games what they are. This doesn't mean a game shouldn't also have a solid narrative, not at all. If a game is going to have a preset story, then I think they have an obligation to make it a fun experience. But I think what's most important, particularly in RPGs, is creating a deep, intricate world and allowing the player to tell their own stories within it. In my opinion, whether Fallout 4 succeeds or fails rests on whether or not Bethesda stays true to their own philosophy. In Fallout 4, I'm not asking for a blank slate of a character. I'm asking for enough room to express myself, and I hope the game provides this. Will Fallout 4 suffer from having a predetermined protagonist? I'm not sure. Maybe the game will benefit from a more predefined, predetermined character and storyline, but I don't play Fallout for this sort of storytelling. I play Fallout to express myself through a character that I create. I'm sure that ability won't be gone in Fallout 4, but I fear player agency can be severely lacking with such a predefined character. But hey, that's just my opinion. So what do you guys think? Am I jumping the gun? Overreacting? What do you think about Fallout 4? Do you think it will be a good game? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.